it's that lovely moment again when I take joy, delight, you know, bringing women of substance in Nigeria. Women who are making things happen. Women who are doing maybe little things, if you want to call it that, but in an extremely beautiful way. I'm so excited, in fact, super excited, because today I have a personality of Exton, someone I have so longed to have on the show, and today I've been privilege to have that happen for me and I know that is someone you're going to uh, look forward to having for another 25 minutes. I tell you what, she is um, a whole lot of things. I call her totality of womanhood because she starts by being a daughter, a wife, a mother. She's a prolific light writer. She's an architect. She's a philanthropist. She's a whole lot. Let me not empty it. When I return from my break, I'll be introducing my guest. I keep your mouth watering for now. Okay, if you're just joining us, the program is The Woman and you haven't missed out. I'm about to showcase my guest for today, a woman who is an epitome of beauty, if you ask me. And she is the mother of Cardinal State, the lady who is making things happen here, making children and women feel real good. Join me as I welcome architect Hadiza Isma El Rafai. And I want to say thank you for having me in your state. You're welcome, Elizabeth. All right. It's been all smiles. You know, when we see First Ladies, we think um, a whole lot of things. Number one, they're not nice. But ever since I stepped into this seat, in your presence, I feel back. It's been courtesy, courtesy, courtesy. You know, show of kindness and uh, humility all along. And I'm wondering, is it part of the etiquette of being a First Lady? <laughs> That's an interesting question, but um, I don't know why you should say you think of first ladies as not being nice. I can assure you that the first ladies that I interact with, they are all very nice women. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of times when I meet first ladies, um, I see a whole lot of military protocol, but I've been here for how many hours? I haven't seen any. Oh. Yeah, I try to keep things simple, actually. That's how it should be. I, I quite appreciate that. Now, let me go back to who you are a little bit. You are first in the course of study, an architect. And I'm wondering, what is a woman doing in that field? How did you choose that? Hmm. Yes, that's another interesting question. In fact, while I was studying architecture, I think in the whole class there were just three of us women. Three? Yes. One, two, three. How many men? Uh, maybe like a hundred. <laughs> oh my God. So actually, maybe because of the nature of the course and also the fact that in architecture it's not just about designing, you have to supervise your project, you have to be on the site. So it's more or less seen as a man's profession. But I think nowadays things are changing. You know that we have women doing so many things that before were thought of as just for women, for, for men. Like we have a lot of women pilots now and uh, so many other professions are being taken up by women. So I think that saying that what a man can do, a woman can do, is true. And I tell you, when women get into anything, they bring in the whole of themselves because they are usually very multitask and a lot of it comes to play. I did not tell them, you know, when I got into this place, I got bamboos, you know, because I saw a lot of beauty. And when I said, okay, and it's little wonder, it's uh, an architect place and uh, it has to be as pretty as it can be. I love that. I'm going to take you outside and get to showcase what I enjoyed when I came in here. But back to you, you have the this uh, knack for creative uh, writing. In fact, there uh, there's a book, particular book in your name as we speak, and uh, you organize a whole lot of creative um, writing. I'll go to your creative cut later as well. How do you merge? I thought maybe architects are more like drawing things than writing things. What's the connection? I would say that there's a connection actually because both architecture and creative writing, they're creative activities. Architecture is also a creative activity because even though it's both a science and an art, you find that you create. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to imagine something and you create it. So like if you research, you'll find that there are many beautiful architectural pieces all over the world that are renowned for their architectural beauty. So it's, architecture is also about creativity and of course creative writing. But um, having said that, 
Um, I have to say that uh, for now, you know, you have different phases of your life. But now what is more important to me and what I enjoy is actually creative writing. Oh, really? Interesting. So how do you get your inspiration to write? I get inspiration from everything that's around me. Oh. I won't be surprised if she decides to write about me tomorrow. No problem. <laughs> because we've been doing a lot of crazy things behind camera. She's been laughing at us. Yeah. And you've been giving me some ideas which have been filing in my brain. So don't be surprised. <laughs> but like I said, you get inspiration from everything. Almost everything that happens. I mean, if you have enough imagination, you find that you can write a story about it. That's interesting. Okay, writing your story is one thing I, I appreciate about you, but another thing that really touches me a whole lot is the philanthropy um, in you. I know you didn't start today, right from the time your husband was a minister, you were already into it, and today you've taken it to a whole new level, and I see it even growing. When I came in earlier, you were not here, we moved around the uh, classrooms, I was quite impressed, and uh, we got some of them to uh, sing a song for me. I was quite impressed. I'll take a break and let us uh, have a little bit of what the student demonstrated for us. of this uh, philanthropism in you? Well, I think um, many of us have been privileged in life, especially us of the older generation. The country has given us a lot. We went to good schools, government schools, but they were good enough. Our parents did not have to pay so much for our education. When you think about that, and you are at a place that you're comfortable. I think all of us have to think of a way of giving back to the society. At this point in my life, I believe that the best thing I can do is to give back. Because really, basically now, I don't have any ambitions for myself personally, especially in terms of material things. I'm quite content with what I have. So I think that the best thing is for me to look at those that are less privileged than me and see how I can impact their lives. And while doing that, there are many ways you can impact people's lives. But I choose what I'm doing because as I'm impacting on other people's lives, I'm also enjoying what I'm doing. So it's not like work to me. So in this foundation, we are into basically two things. We have the creative writing program, which is what I really enjoy. We target young people and we try to encourage them and give them a platform so that they can enhance their own creativity. You know, a lot of the times the arts and things to do with creativity are not taken as important as, you know, so-called serious subjects like maybe law or medicine. But we have talented youngsters that unless they're given a platform, they will never realize their full potentials. Apart from that, we have the Women Literacy Program, which we target women mm -hmm. that have had to drop out of school due and to one reason so or the other. Yes. So that's it. So far now we have 10 centers all over Kaduna. Because, you know, some of us were lucky, maybe because of the kind of parents or families we came from, but not every woman, especially in the North, is as lucky as some of us. And we find that when these women are given the opportunity, they really rise up to it. Yeah, I saw a lot of zeal in them, you know, when I walked in. And um, I wasn't able to talk to the curriculum planners, but what do you do with them when they are done with the school? Well, the whole idea of the Women Literacy Program is to make sure that our women become literate. Because in this world of today, if you're illiterate, it's a real big handicap. So the, our idea is, instead of 
gathering women to give them what is known as empowerment, teach them how to make soup or how to make um, uh, puff puff or how to knit. We recognize that in the world of today, knowledge is free, is out there, but you have to know how to access it. So what we do is after we have, they've gone through our literacy program, we now pass them off to the next stage, which is the ICT training. Mm -hmm. We train them on how to use the computer, how to access information on the internet so that they can help themselves. Okay, so even if they want to learn how to make wigs, they can actually go online. Google it. If they want to learn, yes, how to do beats. That's a good one, yeah. you know? So they get to challenge themselves with what they see. Yes. I never really thought about I it. What we do is giving them the tool to help themselves. Because knowledge is out there and it's free. So you don't have to gather women in a room and teach them something that they can just Google and see it. On YouTube, you'll see people demonstrating actually how to do it. When you want to cook anything, you just Google, the, the recipe will be there, the ingredients you need will be there. People will tell you what to do. So the important thing is to be literate enough and also to know how to access that information. Lovely, lovely. Now, um, I want to take you outside because I talk to you from the inside here and I still get my brain, you know, reoccurring what I saw as I walked in here. And I want my audience to see it with me. It's a beautiful scenery, you won't believe this. And all of it she put up together with her fingers. You know, women are multitask, women are multi-talented. And they say, if you train a woman, you train a nation. Now you see she has 10 centers, you know, for what she's doing. And I'm told reliably that each center has 25 people. So by the time she's done four years doing this, you know how many people will be out there well knowledgeable. All right, so I'm going to take you outside so the whole world will get to see what I've been talking about. So I have been screaming about the beauty, the aesthetic, uh, the aesthetics of this place. I will walk out with her and uh, get to finish my interview within the garden and you get to enjoy what I've been enjoying. Let's go together. Okay. How do you put all this together? In part of uh, your architectural designs. So apart from architecture, I love horticulture. Oh. One of my passions is gardening. Yes. Oh, gardening. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to enjoy this beautiful space here. Yeah. What I notice about you, you have this touch of color that works so amazingly well. Mm. You know, green, mixing up with uh, other things. And I particularly like the whites against the, <laughs> the grass. That's a good one. You know, I told you it's your house, but I offer you seats because <laughs> you're the host. Am I the host or you're the host? All right. Yeah. No, there are a whole lot of things I have enjoyed about you. And um, one of them is your very relaxed nature. I was going through, I've been following you for a while, and I was, you know, listening to some things you said, uh, humor with your husband. <laughs> Some Twitter, you know, speeches that you made. Uh, one of them, yeah, I think you were at the airport and you cracked some jokes. And some people didn't understand your joke, you know. How do you crack up this joke? I mean, with a, a seemingly serious look around you, a serious office, but you still find time to crack okay, jokes. I think we should always find time for humor. I like cracking jokes. I like making people laugh, you know. And um, I think it's important to laugh with all the serious problems that we have. I think it's, it's, it's always good to see the humor in things. And almost, I think in almost everything, you can always find humor. Created hashtags, you know, you know, um, how, I want us to remember some, <laughs> you know, when you say you want to, when next year you're going to tweet, you have to create, you know, hashtags for people to understand that it's a joke. Oh, yeah. uh, there was one you said, uh, strictly jokes, strictly for laugh. You have several hashtags. It's because in particular, because of the tweet I made that you mentioned about being at the airport and having to queue up in New York and uh, don't they know who I am. <laughs> it was a joke, but people started yeah. commenting that, hey, look at this woman, she thinks blah, blah. So I realized that Nigerians, many Nigerians don't get sarcasm or joke. So I said, it's good 
to write a caveat first. <laughs> Common sense required, <laughs> you know, just so that they know that yeah, you know uh, your husband is one man that wherever you are, if, if his name is mentioned in Nigeria, one thing that comes to mind is discipline, you know, seriousness. And um, reading about your tweets to him, and he replies you in a very jovial manner. Some of us, you know, felt elated because um, for people we thought are so serious-minded and um, disciplined, they actually find time to crack joke. But back then, uh, back back to you and him, how do you relate, you know, very well as a wife to such a very serious man? Yes, in a way, my husband is serious, but I have to say that he's also a very jovial person. He also likes making jokes, so we have a lot of fun together. That's that's cool. Yeah. Do you do you find a balance between being a woman, a wife, a mother, a sister, and a first lady with all the job you do? How do you strike a balance? Yeah, it's uh, in the beginning it was a bit hard, but I think now um, it's so much easier for me because like you said you have to strike a balance i know as the wife of the governor there are certain things that i have to do but i also have my own personal interests that i do not think is fair for me to just leave them because i am the wife of the governor after all this wife of governor thing is only for a time I think what is more important for instance for me, what is more important is this foundation because it is something that I want to do for the rest of my life and it has nothing to do with whether my husband is governor or not. That's a lovely one. There was something you said earlier on that caught me thinking when you said um, you have no ambition anymore for yourself, materially speaking. You know, I never really thought about that from the perspective you said it. And uh, as soon as you said it, it got me thinking. I asked myself a question. I'm not sure I've been able to give an answer to it, but I'm going to throw that question to you. What does money mean to you? Money is important. But I think it's important up to a point. There's just a threshold. You know, you cannot be happy if you wake up each morning and you don't know where to get food for your children or how to pay your children's school fees. But once that threshold has been met, that is, you are able to feed yourself, you have a good car, you are able to pay your children's school fees, I don't think any extra money will make you any happier. Like I always joke and say that I do not think that Aliko Ongoti is any happier than I am. Definitely. Because I've been blessed, at least I, I know that I can feed my family, you know, my children's school fees will be paid. So I don't think anybody that is so much richer than me is any happier. But if I were in a situation where I wake up and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to feed my children, clothe my children, or put a roof over my head. Then certainly I will not be happy. So I think money is important, but only up to a point. That's lovely. I'm going to get a little bit vain, you know, and uh, leave all the serious talk. I started by describing you as an epitome of beauty. And if I tell the world <laughs> your age, even though a lot of people already know, they will tell me I'm lying. But look at you, looking so young, you know, uh, looking ready for take two. <laughs> I want to know the secret. Somebody has already, one of your children offered me a glass of um, uh, juice already. I'll yeah. take some of it. And, okay. um, maybe you get to share the blessing of youth well, from you. Talk to us about it. <laughs> Talk to me about your workout. Uh, so we say we thank God. In a few months, I'm going to be 60. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Is that the face of a 60-year-old? <laughs> they say 60 is the new 40. Oh, right? that's a good one. Yeah. 60 is the, the new, new 40. 40. So we thank God. Um, it's good to age 
with good health, yes. gracefully with good health. And also I think we are lucky in this day and age, rather as, when you compare with our parents or our grandparents, you know, we moisturize, we do all kinds of things to, to help us. So we say we thank God. You can't compare a 60-year-old woman of today with a 60-year-old woman back then. Okay. Does it have to do with your state of mind as well? Because I see you're a very happy yeah, person. True, I guess, I guess so. Because stress, you know, is the enemy. If you're stressed out, you, it shows. It will show on your face. Depending on the stress, sometimes your hair falls out. It's a lovely one. Now, I'm going to, you know, do a little bit of uh, expo so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you people out a little bit and show you a bit of what she does to keep young. And it's someone I think you should copy. <laughs> So, how was the workout this morning? It was okay. I, I did 32 minutes, about 3.2 kilometers. Oh, okay. okay. So I did a bit longer than usual today. Yeah, so it's now time to replenish what yeah. you have expended. 142 k calories. Oh, that's great. Response. That's great. So, I can now which eat. one do you want now? The boiled egg or the omelette? I think the boiled egg is healthy. Oh yes, and I don't know why they still have the and sausages there because that's not really very processed healthy. Processed food is not good. Okay, dig in. Okay, I will start with the fruits. Good. How was your coffee? Okay, thank you, thank you for bringing my coffee to me in bed this morning. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's one of the things, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Kaduna State, Architect. Hadiza Isma El Rufai Dawas to keep herself, you know, going beautifully both on the inside and at the outside. And uh, before we leave, I want to know, what would you like to be remembered for? What I'd most like to be remembered for is as a person that has impacted the lives of others. I want to be able to say at the end of the day that I helped in making life better for at least the few people that I've been able to touch. There are so many problems in this world and sometimes when you look at the big picture you tend to be discouraged. But I don't think we should be discouraged. You should just do the little that you can do. So I want to be remembered as somebody that has been able to touch the lives of the people at least in her immediate environment. That's a good one. But I won't go without this last one. If you look backward, are there moments you wish to say, oh, had I known, I would have retreated, I would have rejected, I would have done it the other way around? <sighs> well, that's a tough one. <laughs> Um, not, not, not in many instances, really, not in many instances. But because I enjoy so much what I do now, I wish I had started earlier. earlier. But then I also tell myself that God's time is the best because maybe this is just the right time. You understand? Maybe this is the time that I am able to have the ability to do what I'm doing now. So. It's good. 
That's a nice one. Thank you so much for your audience. I've had a wonderful time in Kaduna, I must say that, and um, learned a lot again from you. I've picked up Ghost Time is the best, as always, <laughs> and you have also told me about uh, you know, a whole lot of things put together. I've actually enjoyed that. It's amazing that a woman um, of a great achievement like you can still be down to earth. And I want to throw it out to a lot of people who are out there. If you think you have arrived, we have always been told the best of leaders remains the best of servants. Why don't you serve just like she's doing? Thank you very much. The program is The Woman. And my name is Elizabeth Abba. It's been a wonderful time. I'll be with you again with another exciting personality. Until then, cheers. Thank you.